So last week, my brother Patrick and I were working with Hackensack to clean up the Oradell Reservoir. And today, it's Sunday, we're going to be at the Lincoln Park West doing a cleanup again at the same time, 10 a.m. The Hackensack Riverkeeper group is going to be partnering today with the Sierra Club, Friends of Lincoln Park, and the Hudson County Improvement Authority to do this cleanup. So I guess we're going to be meeting them all today. So, we are way behind schedule, so let's get to it. I will say though, we are genius. We know that we're always late, and so we have to be here at 10 a.m. It is nine, sorry, yeah, 9.51 because we told ourselves we needed to leave by nine to give ourselves 30 minutes to be late. And we were 20 minutes late to our 9 a.m. goal, which means that we were, or we are 10 minutes early. I see a farmer's market. You know what, if we get lost, we'll just stay at the farmer's market. I don't know where to go. Ah. So we're definitely lost. We're definitely late. Like late, late. <laughs> because we're not in the right place. Ah! Let me in. So much for not being late. Darn it. I spoke too soon. This is what <laughs> happens. Oh my God. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. <laughs> we did it! I was only slightly concerned for like a good five minutes, but it's fine because we just followed our bad sense of direction and somehow it got us here. So let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. There they are, look at them. And you can see the, oh! Ah, oh, this is all wet. Oh, oh no, no, why no, did no, you no. Do this? We're walking through grass that is just soaking wet. I was not expecting to be wet this early in the morning. It's called mud. <laughs> No, it's not mud. I think it's just water. No, it's mud. Ah, it's not ready. Okay, we see some bright t-shirts. I'm guessing those are the organizers. Time to mask up. While we are here and just kind of waiting for our safety talk to happen, uh, we're going to walk over to the Sierra Club table and see what they tell us. Yes. Hi, okay, so Tyler sent me over. Okay. I'm Luisa, nice to meet you. Hi. I'm Steve Krinsky, I'm a retired teacher who basically spends my time being an environmental advocate. And I love it, I'm a bicyclist, I ride my bike here from downtown Jersey City. Um, I hike and I love this place. And I'm, I've lived here long enough that I remember what it was like before they refurbish the wetlands. Um, I like to say sarcastically, well not entirely sarcastically, that in Jersey City, wetlands used to mean dump. I'm also the chair of Skyway Park Conservancy. Skyway Park is a 32 acre park, about a mile north of here. It's a former Superfund site, it's actually still a Superfund site, but it's been cleaned up. And it was the site of an underground fire that burned, ready for this? For 14 years. Huh? 14 years? Of course I had to look into this. To understand, we have to go back to 1970 when PJP Landfill Company operated a commercial landfill on approximately 87 acres in an industrial area in Jersey City, accepting chemical and industrial waste until about 1974. In 1977, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection ordered PJP to properly cover and grade the landfill and to remove waste in contact with the Hackensack River and the Sip Avenue ditch. But the company did not comply. <laughs> Shocker. So what do you think happens when buried drums of chemicals and decomposing landfill material live together? Spontaneous combustion. From 1970 to 1985, subsurface fires frequently burned on a 45-acre portion of the landfill under the Pulaski Skyway, 
leaching hazardous chemicals into the soil, sediment, surface water, and groundwater of the area. I wasn't even living in Jersey City. It was, it was in the newspapers. Everybody knew about it. It smelled, smoke, everything. How did it take so long for these agencies to take action when for years protesters had been trying to get their attention? <sighs> Finally, it was declared a Superfund site in like 1981 or two, something like that. It was actually in 1983 when the EPA placed the site on the Superfund program's national priorities list, which meant resources were finally allocated to extinguish the fires, clear out chemicals, cap a portion of the landfill, and install a gas venting system. And they brought in some engineers and they dug down and they found 30,000, I'll say it again, 30,000 barrels of toxic waste. The good news is um, a bunch of us have been advocating to turn the site into a park. Just this past November, Mayor Fulop announced that it would be the site of, of Jersey City's COVID Memorial Park with 500 trees representing each of the 500 people who died during the pandemic and couldn't, couldn't be buried. So Steve is leading everyone down one of the paths to start collecting trash. We will be going down this bridge because I do want to see the extent of the river and we're going to be joining them. I'm so excited. It's also not as hot as last time, so I can't wait. Oh, this is beautiful. I cannot believe that nearby there was a super fun size. My super fun, not size, super fun site. Every time he said, uh, Steve said super fun, I keep hearing super fun. And I'm like, that does not, like a fire for 14 years does not sound like a fun thing. Also, funny thing, I ran across one of my friends from high school. I haven't seen her since high school, so it's been more than eight years. She saw me and I saw her and we exchanged looks and you're like, oh, what's up? So she came over and she was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm seeing you here. I didn't know if you were gonna be here. I thought you were still in California. So apparently she saw the video from last week and came across the Hackensack River Keeper and decided to bring her mom and her boyfriend along, which is amazing because not gonna lie, the doubtful side of me was wondering if anyone was watching the videos, if anyone actually cared. This is why I wanted to do this because hopefully if a few people watch it and a few people come out and help, that's, you know, that's more than what was happening before. That makes a difference. It makes a big difference. <sighs> Can you tell I'm happy? I guess I am. I'm gonna go and start helping out and not just record because I came here to help, not just put my sweaty face in front of a camera. So I'll see you when I start picking up trash. Hello, hey, that's the friend I was telling you all about. <laughs> It's me, it's me. Her name is Daniela. Hi. Oh my god. Hi. How's the site? Ooh, look at that progress. Hi mom. Over there. Hello. Look at her bag. <laughs> oh, look at that bag. Oh, you're in the water water. Yeah, over here. So how often do you do this? This is my first time. Oh! And all because of you. Oh, uh, I love that. Yeah, so um, I saw your post. So I was like, oh, this is cool. I would love to do this. So I looked into it in the Instagram. And then here I am a week later. Look at that. That's called impact. <laughs> Isn't it insane how many pieces of styrofoam just broken down yeah, there? It breaks down very easily. Yeah, and it's stupid. It's toxic. You should not be using it. And a lot of it comes from either no, construction. It has, like, because a lot of people use it for shelters for homeless cats mm -hmm. in the winter because it's a way of keeping them warm um, it helps like maintain the temperature right it's a yeah. way of helping the animals but at the same time it's like how we get rid of it it's right. not working out oh man this is beautiful Michael described this process really well. It's like being an archaeologist and having to dig for all the trash that we have contributed. Do you see this? This is one of those cute little, uh, uh, what's it called? Dental floss things. I don't know what these are called. This is brand Oral-B. 
personally, I find these to be really stupid, right? Like, I understand that this is easier because you can hold it and just clean each of your tooth individually, but that's also why you have two fingers, right? You just wrap it on your finger and you can clean your teeth. Hey, that's Tyler. Remember him from last week? Wow, uh, this is why he's the organizer and I'm just volunteering. These bags are really heavy and I'm really glad to see that wheelbarrow that he's loading all the trash bags onto to bring to the front of the park where we all met at the very beginning. Because guess what? It would have been quite painful for the 48 volunteers that showed up to move 21 bags which totaled 945 pounds. I'm gonna say that one more time. 945 pounds in the last three hours. That is incredible. Well, I would call that a successful day. We found our first ah, tire and everyone was so excited taking photos. They were like, oh my God, you did it. Everyone gets really excited about the first tire and it's really cool. We were digging. I mean, I was digging with my hands. My knees were on the ground. I got a little carried away and it's really hard not to like once you start and you're already dirty like why not right let's just do it so I got into the river I was I'm just so dirty I thought I was dirty last week but girl <laughs> this is on a different level no pizza though I was hoping for pizza so I guess now I have to go buy food <laughs> so I guess now we'll just drive back and get cleaned up and get some food but Thank you everyone for organizing this amazing event, for helping out this park. It's beautiful. If you haven't been, check out the Lincoln Park in Jersey City. The fountain as you're driving in is really cool and it's really exciting to see the passion that has driven everyone to come here. Okay, that's it. Until next time. Bye.